backstage and through there rather yeah. than trying to find so, it. So, what time is it? Yeah. <laughs> So for you, you must be kind of nerves in a different way as well, because obviously it's... Yeah, I am... I've been nervous ever since they asked me to do something, because it's kind of like... Um, working with your heroes in some capacity, and obviously putting my name to their name, the expectation of anything that I'm going to do is going to be enormous, and I obviously don't want to let them down, but I, at the same time, I don't want to do anything conventional. I want to make something personal and and then adults I don't want to stop digging for shit either you know because everyone's like they obviously they've had a checkered history in terms of court cases and wranglings and then they obviously split up and everyone's kind of expecting me to go in looking fishing for dirt and all I actually want to do is focus on the music and watch the music record the music and edit the music um, you know I've been to I've been I've only had limited access but I've been to a couple of rehearsals and it is just about the music. You know, I've stood in the centre of the room when they're rehearsing and seen something that obviously you never get to see because in a rehearsal room they're sat almost looking at each other in a four, two people facing, two people facing. And when you stand in the centre of that, you suddenly see what they've been seeing since they were kids when they first got together. And it's like an eye contact and a shorthand that when they're playing to an audience, um, obviously they have to face those people. So I've had access to something quite rare, really. memorabilia, either an album, a ticket from an original gig, or a ticket for the future gig at Dean Park. Uh, and we, they come, they get that, they get a wristband, probably going to be seven to eight hundred people are going to get that. So you can imagine that they sold 240,000 tickets in 11 minutes, there's going to be a lot of people turning them. So there's much of a story outside than there is about the gig. The, the people that remain outside, obviously, we don't know this. Will it die down? You know, will it? Will people dissipate? Will people get in the cars? They haven't got tickets. You know, um, I think it could be interesting as well. Cause just thinking about what I would. You know, I'm sure there'll be some counter rumours going out that they've sold out some pictures. You know, there's going to be all kinds of stuff going on online. And I'd, I'd also imagine I, I sort of think there'll be people that try and break in as well. Yeah, there'll be stories. So you can't yeah. get anyone climbing and, and yeah. stuff. Obviously, obviously, the dream for me is that it kind of goes a bit tits up. Out, and knowing the fan base of the Roses and how long it's been for everyone, all of us waiting for them to come yeah. back, um, there's always a sense around the first of anything that it's the most important. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I can't imagine it not going a bit crazy. Yeah. And I can't imagine, uh, and you know, not so much like a, in a violent way, but I would imagine I'd just want to be near if it was me personally and I couldn't get enough. I'd, I'd stay right to the end in the yeah. hope that the band had come out at the end and. You want to get the, you know, in a, from a dramatic way, you almost want the elation. Once somebody's got a wristband, then they're coming in. And then there'll be some people with a wristband, and there'll be some people without. Because yeah, I, would, I would imagine a bit of, you know, Dunkirk spirit in there, that they'll fucking make their own party outside. Yeah. And it could be really sensational, yeah. and it's got just as much chance, if not more chance, of that crowd outside being featured than the crowd inside being featured. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm as, I'm as open to that, so whoever gets out there, it's not even been kicked out. It actually, in turn, from my point of view, I could be more interested in that than, than anything, yeah. really. So one of the themes is that there are some. The film could be as much about the fans as the band. And what we found, what we found, just the fact that they sold out. Some the people, life-changing events happened in the 80s. So feel, you know, people want to tell you the stories. Just for, let let them tell yeah. them. You know, I mean, yeah, there is the one, potential for, for this. You know, so if you, you know. You'll be on your own, you, 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 again, use your instincts. If you see something interesting, why do you like the, you know, if, you, if, if they're dry up, feel free to say, why are you here? Why do you like the band? Just little things like that and just let them talk. My backstory, for, for some people know this, but my backstory as to why I'm here, and, you know, I, I, I went, I had a ticket for Spike Island back in 1990, and, uh, and I took acid the night before the gig with all my mates who also had tickets, and I, was, I went to this campfire by a river, 
to about two o'clock in the morning and then I started having a very not good time on this acid and, um, and wandered off thinking that my fucking parents hated me and walked around town for four hours going up to anyone that would listen and saying my dad's fucking hates me, he's going to kill me and, mm. uh, and then gave my ticket to somebody and said I don't want this, it's really bad and, uh, and then obviously about 11 o'clock the next day I fucking come round from this very bad trip, realised I wasn't dying and uh, that I'd given my ticket away and I ran into town and the bus had gone with everyone on it and I missed the trip because of this shitty acid trip and, uh, and so that's kind of what's brought me here and so in a way I, I love the idea that there's people out there which is why it's important we get the name and number because someone might um, have something about them that we actually sort of maybe want to say to people right we're going to send you a camera and you a camera we want you to document your day going to Heaton Park uh, so it really is, you know, th th it's almost more interesting to me to find people that have like fucking they missed out then and they've missed out again and they've maybe got tickets for Heaton Park and that's where they're going to get it. So the actual core of why I'm here is to try and capture a piece of my youth that was lost, which everyone tells you you can't do and I'm just fucking trying to force it through. Um, so uh, trying to prove to myself that I can. So I'll have a wig on later and uh, fucking baggy jeans. Yeah. I'll be giving it my best. So that's the lorry to go. That's the wife that's going to go back. And just one thing. Um, so in terms of story, like story threads, is this just something that you're going to kind of pick up as you go? What do you mean story threads? Do you mean? Well, obviously to kind of bind the whole thing together because you know you're filming rehearsals, you're filming gigs. Yeah, I mean I've. It's been, it's been a funny one because I've like, I thought it would all be about the sort of build up. I thought I was kind of being brought in and I was going to have to live with them for six months. Um, and as it's turned out, I've only, I've only been there twice and I'm kind of going, um, I don't ultimately know what, what I'm going to end up making. I kind of feel like it's going to be, I'm going to a few key events along the way, but there's something about Warrington, there's something about this one because it is the first thing. Um, so, Dean, you know, this could be a film literally about tomorrow, or it could be a film about the next three months or beyond. Um, but until, you know, this is a weird thing with documentary, that you have no concept what's coming. Something you think is going to be interesting is boring, and something that you think nothing's going to happen, mad stuff happens. So, um, you know, tomorrow is potentially could be the entire film. Uh, or it could be all Heat and Park, or it could be all about the tour, or who knows whether the band will stay together, split up, you know, I can't obviously foresee that, the, the future, so all I know is, you know, I have to take these events I'm allowed to access to one day at a time yeah. and try and shoot them the best that I can, and hopefully um, I'll end up with a film that, you know, the band are proud of and I'm proud of and people want to watch, but the, the main thing for me is that I make a film from a fan's perspective. I don't try and be clever, I don't try and make a documentary like everyone else makes it. I make a film that I want to see and a fan wants to see first, you know, and that's the dream, if you like. Are you just, just do what you do. Yeah, that's right. people will ask me questions about it, I would imagine. If I see a... That's beautiful. Thank you. So to be the first person on it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get your money back. It's going to be like it's not there. Just do whatever you're doing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I wish you'd not signed up for it now. Whatever you do, don't pick it in. It'll be mine. Yeah, wherever you go, we go with you now. You won't see me. Yeah, no, yeah. Just be your viewer, your respect. Yeah. How are we feeling then? Yeah, I'm starting to get really... I woke up this morning quite blasé. I played a tennis tournament with some of the other members of the crew and um, just had a meeting with about 15 or 20 people. Obviously, on my shoes, I had, like, literally two cameras. Um, that's the most I've ever had. There's, like, 20 camera people. And, um, and I just walked out from the meeting and saw what was in there and sort of opened the door and looked in and the unreality of it is starting to kick in a bit now. Um, all of a sudden... The, you know, the band are, yeah, it, love and look. So. Yeah, so um, I, um, I never got to go to any of these gigs, and just as I was walking past the door there, I actually looked in and thought, not only am I <laughs> allowed to be here, I'm filming it, I'm going to be backstage. We've got no idea, we think they're announcing it about four o'clock, we've got no idea how many people are going to turn up. We've got 20 camera people to make sure that the moment's captured. And um, 
and I, you know, I'm going to be able to stand where I want, really, and watch it inside of the stage up on the balconies. But, uh, yeah, it's quite weird, I must be honest. I, like, I can't really say anything really cool, because my head's going to be blown out. Um, that's noisy. When I normally make a film, I would... Obviously, I've usually written or co-written the script, so it's kind of my story to throw around and to throw away and do what I want with. When you're working with a band, you've got, basically, there is no story to start with, and you've got those people are in control of what your days of shooting are. So normally on a feature film, you know, you shoot for six weeks, I'm shooting from there to there, and I get everything in that time. Whereas with this, they might ring up and say, you know, do you want to come up two weeks on Thursday, and you'll go up there and you just have to shoot what's going on that day. Um, so it's really, yeah, it's, it's mad. It's mad how hard it is and how scary it is because of that. Because basically, at the moment, we've, we've literally only had a few days with them. So I've, you know, I thought, oh great, I'll do six months or three months of rehearsals, and I'll have a massive part of the film that hasn't materialised. So I'm now <laughs> literally just done a few camera tests. And I'm, I'm at Warrington at the first gig, shooting it, and all that. But I'm a massive believer that. You have to have kind of faith in the universe with these things, and whatever it's meant to be, it will be. And um, every film I've ever made, I've followed that ethos. And just because this has thrown me a few curveballs, I've got to have faith in the fact that it isn't going to be about the rehearsals, because obviously I've not got a lot of the rehearsals. Maybe it's going to be about tomorrow, maybe it's going to be about something that happens in the future. Um, I obviously wouldn't make a... I'm not going to make a habit of making feature-length documentaries, because I like to be in a bit more control really <laughs> but uh, this one was always going to be special you know the Stone Roses asked me to come and wipe their arse on tour I'd be there so um, this is you know a massive opportunity yes I'm shitting myself because I don't quite know what I'm going to make but um, we're going to make something and I have faith that you know there's a film out there somewhere